Hi there. Thought we'd uh, try to connect this way this, this week rather than uh, in person. So I thought we could worship God a little bit. I thought that we could uh, have a discussion about what's going on. And so we as, as Woodlawn Church will try to stay in touch with you all. So I have a couple of scriptures for you like to start out with Genesis, and it's Genesis 4, verse 9. It is, it, he says, Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? I don't know, he replied. Am I my brother's keeper? Then I'd like to go to 2 Timothy 6.11. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 6 to 11. For this reason I remind you to fan the flame of the gift of God, which is in you through lay the laying on of hands. For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid. It gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or me, his prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel, for the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purposes and grace. Let's see if we can get this together. The grace was anything we have done, but because of his own purpose. I said that. This grace was given to us in Jesus Christ long before the beginning of time, but has now been revealed through the appearance of our Savior, Christ Jesus who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And then finally, I'd like to, I'd like to go to Psalm 91 from the message. The psalmist says, You who sit down in the high God's presence, spend the night in El Shaddai's shadow, say this, God, you're my refuge. I trust in you and I'm safe. That's right. He rescues you from hidden traps shield you from deadly hazards. His huge outstretched arms protect you. Under them you're perfectly safe. His arms fend off all harm. Fear nothing, not wild wolves in the night, nor flying arrows in the day, not disease that prowls through the darkness, nor disaster that erupts at high noon. Even though others succumb all around, drop like flies on the right and the left, no harm will even graze you. You'll stand untouched, watch it from a distance. Watch the wicked turn into corpses, yes, because God's your refuge, the high God, your very own home. Evil can't come close to you, harm can't get through the door. He ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. If you stumble, they'll catch you. Their job is to keep you from falling. You'll walk unharmed among lions and snakes and kick young lions and serpents from the path. If you hold on to me for dear life, says God, I'll get you out of any trouble. I'll give you the best of care, and you'll know to get only trust from me. Call me, and I'll answer. Be at your side in the bad times. I will rescue you, then throw you a party. I'll give you a long life, give you a long drink of salvation. I wrote this on Tuesday, March 17th, only four days after praying and canceling church for last Sunday. It was a big decision for me. I've never had to do that before. There have been blizzards where I've held church for one, and power outages where we simply gathered to pray. But this is a unique time in our lives. The church has always come together for worship. We have made church and community some of the most powerful ways that we worship. The last week we met, we did the Corona Bump, where we touched elbows during the passing of the peace, and nobody ever thought, even when we were doing the bump, that things would be called off the next week. I have no idea what the future holds. I assure you that we'll be meeting together just as soon as it is safe for all of us. Coming together spurs us on to quiet our hearts and minds and concentrate on what's important. Coming together gives us a real appreciation of the Holy Spirit, and there is a reason that Jesus says that where two or more are gathered in my name, there I will be too. Our faith is multiplied when we worship together. Here in 2 Timothy, Paul writes that God does not make us timid, but gives us power to love. 
It is that spirit I would urge you to remember in worship this weekend. Yes, I said worship this weekend. Although I anticipate that we'll, we won't hold a worship session here at the church, I would urge you to take a few minutes or more and have a sit down with God. While things seem to be spinning down each, or spiraling down each day that passes, please remember that God is still here. Not only here, but active and alive, God has seen us through wars, rumors of wars, and situations that make this pale by comparison. God will get us through this one as well. For the present time, we'll have to deal with uncertainty and what will happen next, but along with that, we have the certainty of God's presence in our lives. The recommendations for safe practice seem to change every time we turn on our computer or television, but God's promises don't change. As you can see from the psalm, God has promised to see us through. So take that to heart this day. Take it to heart and have confidence in God. It may be for a little while that we will have to practice this social distancing thing in order to keep ourselves healthy. Not only ourselves, but those around us. I think the concerning thing is that we can spread the virus without even knowing that we're sick. Or even just carriers. In-person visiting, especially to the elderly, is not a good idea right now. So it's because today, more than ever, we are indeed our brother's keeper. It is up to us for lo to look out for each person, especially those at high risk. However, we are a people that need to be in contact with another, with one another. A conductor from Eastern Europe <clears throat> was being interviewed after having spent years in isolation because of his political views. After the usual series of political and personal questions, the reporter took a, a surprising turn. He said, what, in your opinion, is the most beautiful piece of music ever written? The maestro thought for a while and didn't answer. While you were in isolation, the reporter pressed further, what did you most want to hear? The music, what music at that moment would you have thought the most beautiful to hear? In the whole world, the conductor said with tears in his eyes, the most beautiful music is the sound of another's voice. So please stay in touch with your church family. If you have elders, give them a call. If you have friends, let them know. God calls us to love our neighbors as Christ has loved us. So how can we love our neighbor during this COVID-19 thing? It's been usual for us to come together to express our love for one another. It's wonderful to see a friend or a relative, perhaps see how they're doing, what kind of week they've had, or to make plans for the following week. But in this new environment, you can show your love by staying apart. It's the opposite of what we used to think. But life has afforded us many ways to keep in touch as we stay apart. There's FaceTime, there's sending a card, there's email, and oh good heavens, there's the telephone. And there's prayer. And remember that the spirit that God gives does not make us timid. Being timid means being afraid of the future. Being timid is walking on new ground and worrying that it will fall out from beneath you. Being timid is worrying about the future. All of these things are not from God. If you have a Bible, take a look back at Psalm 91. Evil can't get close to you, and harm can't get in the door. God has ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. These are God's promises for these uncertain times. Take them to heart. So relax in God's arms, feel protected and loved, and wash your hands. May God's blessings be with you. May God's peace endure. In Christ's name, amen.